Hello and welcome to this video tutorial in which I'm going to cover off the collecting of resources in Jurassic World Alive. So if you want to know how to gather a specific resource in the game, then this is the video for you. So what do I mean by resources? Well they are items in the game that you utilise to make progress in the game. So I will not be including badges, player titles or emotes but I will be including coins, cash, DNA, FIP items, boosts, darts, and scents. So buckle up and enjoy. We'll start off with coins, as this is your basic currency in Jurassic World Alive. You're going to need coins to level up your creatures and to fuse for more powerful hybrids. Without coins, you're really not going to progress in the game. Thankfully, there are plenty of ways of collecting coins each day. Firstly, you have the spin supply drops and spin event drops. You can differentiate between the two types of supply drops as the spin supply drops are yellow and the spin event drops are either green or a colour to match the event's theme for that week. These spin drops are scattered around the map for you to spin. Be aware that there is a cap on the amount of coins you can collect in a day. It's based on player level and caps at 15,000 for supply drops and 7,500 for event drops if you are at level 20. You can also get coins from battle arena incubators and the amount varies based on player level and which type of incubator it is. Alliance missions and daily missions are also a good source of coins. Both reward specific missions with coin rewards so look out for those. You can also collect coins for donating DNA to your alliance members. You get 200 coins for each 200 common DNA donation, 200 for each 50 rare DNA donation, and 500 coins for each epic DNA donation. Coins from DNA donations are capped daily at 50,000, but be aware that donation amounts and caps will be dependent on player level. Also look out for tournament prizes, as they will include at least one coin reward tournament in a month. Strike event incubators also provide coins as rewards and again the amount will vary based on player level and what type of incubator it is. The battle arena is a good source for coins as you will be rewarded with coins for each win and if you get the 10 takedowns for a daily battle incubator that will also reward you with coins. Some campaign missions and achievements also reward you with coins on completion. Occasionally, Ludia will provide coin chases, in which coins of chests are dotted around the map for players to select. Chests have different amount of coins in them, but can hold as much as 2,500. And finally, you can actually purchase coins with cold hard cash in the store. Next up, we have Jurassic World Alive Hard Cash. You'll need cash to buy incubators, coins, boosts, darts or scents in the store. Similar to coins, you can get cash from spin supply drops and spin event drops, and these are capped at 40 and 10 respectively for each day. Cash links are also a good source of in-game cash. These are provided by Ludia through their social media outlets, as well as their newsletter, the latter providing a valuable 100 hard cash. Content creators like GamePress, The Gaming Beaver, and Fodder Gaming will also provide weekly links in their online articles or YouTube videos. Follow them to gain access to their cache links. I have included links in the description to Ludia's newsletter and the content creators channels so you can subscribe and start receiving those cache links. Some Alliance and Daily Missions also provide cash as rewards for completion. For tournaments that include a fifth week, the reward will always be cash. The free six hour incubator includes cash elements inside and the great thing is you don't have to do anything other than be patient and click on them to get the cash. Like coins, some of the achievements and campaign missions will reward you with cash on completion for the first time. And finally you can purchase hard cash in the store with your hard earned real cash. Okay now on to darts. Darts are another vital resource in progressing through the game as they are one source for obtaining DNA from creatures on your map. Two great sources for darts are spin supply drops and spin event drops as there is no limit or cap on the amount of darts you collect in a day. Battle incubators and strike event incubators also provide darts as reward for your battling skills. The free 6 hour incubator also includes darts so make sure you open them every 6 hours. 
Completing specific achievements will also reward you with darts for your efforts. As usual, if you have the available in-game cash, you can purchase darts in the store. 10 darts will cost you 10 cash, 120 darts 100 cash, and 350 darts 250 cash. Now onto boosts. Arguably the most valuable resource for the battle arena, tournaments, raids and campaign missions are boosts. They increase the attributes of your creature beyond the limitation of its level, so you will always need to ensure you have a pool of boosts available for that next new meta creature. Spin event drops provide a maximum of 6 of each boost type on a daily basis, and also battle incubators will provide boosts dependent on their size. Small battle incubators will give you 1 boost, normal battle incubators 2 boosts, and large battle incubators 3 boosts. You will also get full boosts from your battling efforts from a daily battle incubator. Each week there will be two boost strike events which will provide 25 boosts specific to the type of boost strike tower made available. The third weekly tournament will always have boosts as the reward and the amount will depend on your position on the leaderboard. Some achievements will also provide boosts as reward for completion. And finally we have the store which has a boost sale each Friday, so look out for those. On to DNA. So, DNA is the primary resource for fusing and evolving your creatures, so is another essential resource. First and foremost, the game is designed to obtain DNA through the darting of creatures on the map. To increase your chances of spawning creatures within range, you can also use scents, which I will talk about shortly. Incubators from Battle Arena wins, Daily battle takedowns and strike events provide DNA in their contents. Daily battle incubators are particularly useful as they contain arena exclusive DNA. If you do a search in the JWA field guide for battle exclusive, this will display the creatures you see here. Event drops are also a great resource for DNA, especially as they provide DNA for event exclusive creatures. Again, you can use the JWA field guide to search for event exclusive to list the creatures you see here. Completion of the daily mission will also provide 100 DNA for an epic creature that is featured in the month long mission. For Apex DNA, we have Apex boss raids as our only source. So mobilize your alliance to get teams together to take down the Apex bosses and get your Apex DNA. I've not mentioned sanctuaries yet, but they are a great source of DNA through the FIP items, that is, the food, interaction and play items you use in the sanctuary for the creatures whose DNA you are collecting. You also get a nominal DNA reward for placing a creature in a sanctuary and this is collected once the creature is returned to you. Campaign missions also provide DNA as rewards for completing them for the first time, as do some achievements. Tournaments provide DNA rewards during weeks 2 and 4, as well as for the completion of a season's tournament. The amount of DNA given is dependent on your finishing position in the leaderboard for the respective tournament and how many points your alliance has collected during the whole tournament. You can also get DNA by requesting it from your alliance. The amount of DNA you receive is dependent on the player level, so the higher the player level, the more DNA you will get. So get levelling up guys. Last but not least, you can get DNA from the store using the in-game cash or real money. Next up we have scents. These are used to spawn creatures to your location. This is a great way of getting access to creatures to dart that you wouldn't ordinarily get access to at your location. Small scents can be obtained from spin supply drops and spin event drops. Scent strikes will also provide scents and these can vary between small scents and epic scents or even themed scents such as Halloween scents and St. Patrick's scents. In your free 6 hour incubator you will also get a giga scent. This is a large scent that runs for 3 hours so it's really useful for those longer darting sessions. Some achievements also provide scents as rewards for completing them. As ever the store is always there for you to make purchases and scents are no exception. And finally we have FIP items. These are used in the sanctuaries to obtain DNA. Sanctuaries are your best bet for getting event exclusive DNA, so FIP items are a very valuable resource. Each day you can get 4 food and 4 toy items from spin supply drops. You can also get food and toy items from spin event drops, but the limit is 2 per day. 
The free six hour incubator also provides two interaction items. Some achievements also provide FIP items as rewards on completion. And lastly, and you know I'm gonna say, yes, you can spend your hard earned real world money in the store to buy FIP bundles. And now for the real finally. In the 2.11 update, Ludia introduced daily gifts. This rewards players with coins, darts, DNA, FIPS, and incubator rewards for daily play. And there you have it everyone, a breakdown of all the resources in the game and how you can obtain them. Thank you very much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it or found it informative. Please do provide feedback in the description below. Uh, I always respond to, to comments, so please feel free to, to add your comments, feedback, or suggestions. Okay, until next time, this is Alien Newt.